Warning. This video contains very predictable jump scares. Viewer discretion is advised. The Insidious Franchise It's one of those horror movies that just gets it right. Yes, it wears all the trademarks of overworked tropes and cliches, but the beast that emerged from James Wan's mind and slithered into the cinema screen recaptured timeless traditions with a new sense of terror. And the franchise has been running since, with Insidious 5, The Red Door, coming out soon. So it's about time we sit back and binge-watch the series of movies, yet again. And you might be surprised to know, Insidious turns out to be quite accurate to real paranormal phenomena. Dalton's adventure into the further is grounded in far more than rumors of a haunted house. Insidious is based on real historic events and real experiences. So let's start off with a quick rewind. Ten-year-old Dalton fell into a mysterious coma and then stumbled into purgatory. As Dalton falls asleep, his soul separates further from his body and having a gander around an astral realm, like heaven or hell, called the Further. The Further is crammed full of dead people and they all want to possess the fresh young body that basically walked into the wrong room. After strange occurrences follow the family from house to house, a local psychic is summoned to figure out what in the world is going on. Elise uses her spidey senses to determine that, yep, there is no demon and no, the house isn't haunted, it's the boy. Boy, look at me. Look at me, boy. It's Dalton. It then turns out that his ability is hereditary and comes from Dalton's father. Josh actually worked with Elise when he was a kid after his astral projection resulted in a parasitic spirit of an old woman following him from the afterlife. Elise therefore sends Josh into the further to fetch Dalton and bring him home. Josh does the job, and Dalton returns to his body safely and wakes up. But oops, Josh's body has been possessed by the female spirit that stalks him and his soul is stuck back in the further. The next film follows up with this plot twist, then deepens our exploration into the capabilities of astral projection, namely the potential for time travel. Now to get into the reality of the horror, we have to start with what exactly is astral projection. Astral projection is an intentional out-of-body experience and is practiced by those who follow esotericism, but it is present in many different belief systems. During projection, the soul separates from the physical body. The soul or the astral body is a body of light that links the rational soul to the physical body. It travels to different astral planes, which can be populated by all types of entities, including angels, demons, and dead people. The further represents one of these astral planes. Each culture and each religion has a different take on projection. For example, the Japanese believe those who are ill or comatose, like dear Dalton, are more prone to astral projection. In Insidious, we also see astral projection take a number of forms. There's obviously the travel to different planes like the further, but we see time travel too. This chimes in with different schools of thought regarding astral travel. The history of this practice dates back to the Roman Empire, but only in the 18th century did discussion of astral projection take place when Emanuel Swedenborg wrote about his own out-of-body experiences. Interest in projection increased throughout the 20th century, with many notable historical figures claiming that they ventured into other realms, including noted American activist Helen Keller. She claimed she astral projected to Athens. I've been far away all this time, and I haven't left the room. It was clear to me that it was because I was a spirit that I had so vividly seen and felt a place a thousand miles away. Space was nothing to spirit. Aside from being practiced by historic figures, it took center stage in a historic era too. It was during the Cold War that the study and practice of projection took off and it became a political weapon. Beyond the Cultural War, however, was a plethora of evidence suggesting the events we see in Insidious might be all too real. The Soviet Union and the Supernatural Unclassified CIA documents are a staple amongst paranormal enthusiasts specifically those who have a habit of following mysterious lights in the sky. 
A top-secret memo from 1974 proposed an experiment where Patrick Price, a former police officer, would use astral projection to gain information regarding a Soviet installation in the Ural Mountains. They wanted entry and exit points, they wanted floor maps, and they wanted operation details. This was a covert operation that used paranormal capabilities already being tested and trialed by their communist rivals. In the 1970s, the Cold War took a different turn, thanks to Soviet research in ordinary people's supernatural abilities, including astral projection. American intelligence agencies sought to do the same. Scientists Seyman and Valentina were developing technology that could capture one's aura in a photograph. They were investigating energy fields, trying to mentally influence animal behavior and practicing telepathic communication. Throughout the 1960s, a surge in parapsychological research centers took place as ordered by a Kremlin edict. As per the Cold War, the US swiftly did the same. But it was when the US caught wind experiments using bioplasma, they grew concerned. Bioplasmic connectors to human beings echoed claims of sending souls into the astral projection. A Soviet agent could travel across realms, eras, and countries in spirit form and be going through American filing cabinets. The Americans needed to make astral projection a weapon of their own. Dr. Eugene Bernard was one of the many doctors who would pioneer research into projection and sought people willing to travel to these distant realms. Bernard was quickly caught up with the Soviets, which included theories of an army of psychic spies. Soon, dozens of recruits would practice astral projection and recount their experiences, including a woman called Beverly Chalker. She traveled in spirit from Dallas to a house in New Jersey and described in detail the things she saw. She saw a man asleep with a book on the floor describing his pajamas and the decor of the room. The team investigating her astral projection verified her claims. She was right. Similar stories soon leaked to the public, and many ordinary Americans began to try their hand at exploring spiritual realms. Books, articles, and even a set of infamous tapes released in 1973 claimed to reveal how one could separate their soul from their body. It used a rhythmic ticking noise to hypnotize those seeking new paranormal abilities, something we hear throughout Insidious. The tapes would be used by one Robert N. Toschik, an infamous practitioner of projection who would mysteriously die during a session. Six weeks later, Patrick Price died too. Even security in the White House was allegedly amped up over reports the Russians were looking into giving their astral soldiers physical strength so they could become assassins. Interest in projection soon grew out of control, and by the 1980s, the surge in serial killers was pinned on a vast number of them practicing it in prison. Concerns also claimed some projectors could become zombies if their souls got lost, just like Dalton was in Insidious. In fact, one practitioner demarcated several zones of astral travel with Zone C being the limbo where souls were trapped. According to some, the further was real. And Robert Antoschuk was stuck there. Antoschuk was one of the many Americans swept by the incoming tide of astral projection. He had been taught the practice by a yogi whilst in India. But unlike many other Americans who tumbled into amateur projection, he delved in headfirst. He then began to have dreams about a beautiful woman. Her exotic looks and compelling voice was calling to him from a different realm, and he wanted to follow it. On the 1st of June, 1975, he told his roommate not to disturb him. He went into his bedroom, locked the door, and followed the method of astral projection as explained by those tapes released in 1973. Three days passed. His roommate grew concerned. He broke down the door to discover that Robert was dead. His seemingly healthy roommate was lying on his bed and smiling. There was no signs of a struggle or seizure or any other cause of death. Medical experts could offer no answer as to how he died. A local astrologer, however, claimed the answer was obvious. He simply decided not to return to his body. His death would be blamed on his astral projection and it would make headlines across the states. But some alleged that he was not fully at fault. He was drawn in by a beautiful female entity that would call out to many others with her enticing voice. The descriptions of the woman all related to Amit, an ancient Egyptian female demoness. And according to the ancient Egyptians, she existed in astral planes and consumed souls of those she came across. So what do you think? Is the Insidious franchise inspired by real-life events? Comment down in the section below. 
and see you in another episode.